What's up, Candy Lickers? Pleased to meet you. Nice to know me. What you doing? You're listening to another edition of Casio's Cut. I'm your host, Casio, of course, and I am joined by Elias Soriano from Nonpoint. What's up, my man? Thank you, thank you, How thank you, you for taking the time to talk to me. I am. It's my pleasure, man. It is my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Super excited. We got a lot to cover first. I'll just get it out of the way. Uh, we got to talk about this sweet ass shirt that you've got on, the Intimidator. <laughs> What are we yeah. doing with this shirt? Well, this this uh, this is a shirt my my dad uh, who passed a couple years ago was a, a huge uh, NASCAR fan. So I grew up watching uh, Dale do his thing on the track for years, um, you know, and, and and watching all sorts of NASCAR, uh, you know, growing up. So when uh, when he passed, and my my mom uh, asked me if I wanted to go through any of the clothes. So I grabbed all the Harley tees and grabbed every NASCAR shirt I could find. And, and uh, this yeah. is one, definitely one of my favorite. I mean, you could tell the kind of condition it, it's in. Oh, this it's is, so this good. Is, this is an old shirt, but it looks brand new. You know, oh, they, he, it's so good. Were, yeah, you, I, I just, uh, were you a NASCAR fan? Yeah, I, I, I rooted along alongside my dad with, with all the ones that he loved. So. Was number three? Who, who'd y'all love? Was number three and who else? Oh, Dale, Dale Earnhardt was, was, that was, was it? The, the one, the one. And then when his son got into it, you know, we were, we were, uh, we were a huge, uh, you know, junior, junior fans. fans. So, yeah. We stayed in the family, man. We really, we really, it was like a family thing. You know, I, I, you know, for me to be a multicultural kid, to, you know, be such a hardcore NASCAR fan in, in that sense of, of always having somebody to root for. It was, it was fun. It was fun. Well, it kind of leads me in perfectly to a couple of things I was going to bring up because, you guys, uh, throughout your career, uh, by the way, incredible. I mean, we're on 11, album 11, 10? Uh, this is number – well, we're this is our first EP outside of our 10th record, yes. Right. X was the, the 10th, and so you're, you're yeah. about to come out with something new. So, yes. um, first of all, congratulations. I, I mean, I'm sure you know more than anybody uh, when I talk to other rock bands – a career as long as you guys is is pretty amazing. Just, I mean, the first hurdle as a band, doesn't matter what genre, is not killing each other over a long period of time. <laughs> I know you, I know you've had some, you know, personnel changes, but just talk yeah. about, you know, just how do you how do you keep that career going for so long, man? Um, I think it. it I got to give credit where credits due. Our fans, our fans are always there for us when. Uh, when we need them and, and they've always supported us throughout our entire career and uh, they're diehards. So we, we like to, um, we like to give them that love, man. And, and the best way to do that is through the music. Well, part of, I know uh, some people that are watching this, listening, wherever they're consuming it. Um, if they're, maybe they don't under, they don't maybe realize they've heard non-point before because one ties into the shirt perfectly you guys have been in at least one maybe multiple nascar video games right yeah uh yeah the one we were in one uh we actually wrote a song during our second record for nascar cross uh, the line circles. circles and then cross yes, the line as well yeah so you're right yeah there were two there yeah. were two across the line was also the uh the other track so was circle wrote for the video game or did they come to you and say we need we want circles circles uh circles was was uh was it's kind of like what we did with AEW recently where okay. it started as it was something inspired to work towards something and then we took the song way more serious than just uh you know a, a track on the uh on a video game and really uh you know wrote something that we enjoyed and 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 made uh, uh the song circles um, across the line is straight up about NASCAR. So it was, it was, uh, that was the one that we felt like, you know, we really, we really tailored and made for, uh, for NASCAR. So, but, uh, so you, you were in a WWE video game for WWE was first game, right? It was before yes. NASCAR games. Smackdown smack. Well, we were in, no, we were in, uh, uh, the NASCAR first, first. and then we, uh, were in the, uh, WWE SmackDown game. Now let me ask, just for naivety and the man behind the curtain, are you? Yeah. Are you caught? Are you wanting to be in video game world? Did video game contact you, and it's a happy marriage? How does that all come about? 
Uh, it was, you know, a little bit of both of having the team that we had at the time had a connection with uh, ESPN. And through ESPN, uh, we met some people at EA, EA yeah. Sports, uh, after we performed for the X Games for ESPN way back when, when the SK, it was, we, I think we performed the very first X Games ever at, at uh, Kona Skate Park. Damn. And uh, we did that. And then it, we got offered the EA Sports uh, NASCAR track. And then we were in the video game realm. Uh, the WWE uh, track came uh, alongside of the Guitar Hero track uh, and Rock Band. So we, we, we are, we're, we're, we're peppered throughout the, uh, the video game world. So who's the wrestling fan? Were you the wrestling fan? Me and Rob are both really huge wrestling fans. So, okay, you know, yeah. old school coming into the new school again, you know, we kind of fell out for a little while, but, uh, you know, with, with friendships with, you know, Chris Jericho and, uh, you know, touring with Fozzie and watching the AEW uh, uh, brand grow and, and explode the way they, they did, uh, them inviting us into their family to work on something, uh, and that being so amazing. It's, it's, uh, it's very cool to see it all come back again. It's, but, you know, Rob, uh, Rob is such a massive, massive wrestling fan. Like he's a huge wrestling. Fan. Really? Uh, we used to always, uh, you know, it was one of the commonalities of of our friendship in the very beginning that we both really uh, dug. For wrestling. people, for people who are not non point fanatics, Rob is your drummer. Rob, Rob is my drummer. Correct. You guys we both co-founded the band. Yes, we we uh, at during our time when we became. We were just starting to get signed. That was during the Stone Cold Rock years, yeah. uh, which was really exciting at the time. You know, <laughs> watching those two dudes banter, uh, you know, that's, that really made it for us. The wrestling is amazing. Those guys are, are athletes, no doubt. Uh, but the in-between that The Rock used to do and Stone Cold used to do all the, the stuff with the, the announcers <laughs> and snatching the mics away from them and, you know, all that stuff. I don't care what you, you know. You gotta appreciate that as a performer. Yeah, it was it was it was awesome. It really made it entertaining. So um, I, I'm I'm definitely a fan. Uh, this is I'm gonna I, I want I need to talk music with you. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna nerd out and talk wrestling with you. I, yeah, I geek apologize. out. Yeah, but, I saw I saw I saw uh, Hulk Hogan raised Andre the Giant over his head during WrestleMania Live. You were there. Are you watching? I saw, it? Not there, but I was watching on pay per view. Oh yeah, I yeah. saw it during yeah. that time. That's how long I've been a wrestling fan. You know, I used to watch uh, Mexican wrestling on my grandfather's satellite dish when he had the gigantic satellite dish. That was <laughs> the one size, size like, of people's houses. Car. Yeah, uh, behind somebody's house in the middle of like a tiny neighborhood in in Hollywood, Florida. That it was obviously too big of a dish to have in that yard. <laughs> my grandfather had just so he could watch every wrestling from every other country. It was, it was awesome. You were a Lucha fan early. Yes. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. That indeed. is awesome, man. Jumping uh, off the couch onto the, uh, the mattress in the living room. We used to, you know, my, my grandparents used to have a mattress that they used to keep in a closet. It's a giant closet that we used to have. And every single night, my grandfather would drag it out of the closet, drop it in the middle of the living room, and we used to just hang out and lay on the on the mattress and watch TV all night long. But it also became a wrestling ring every once in a while when my grandfather was feeling saucy and wanted to like flip us around and pile drive us and suplex <laughs> us off the couch and stuff. It was it was cool, man. Oh, Good time. Talk, talk about how cool that is now. Uh, you were mentioning it. You're now, you know. Uh, you've did plenty of stuff with WWE throughout the years, uh, mm -hmm. and now you've parted up and did stuff with AEW. Uh, that's got to be, uh, you know, as, as as different notches as a band goes out through your career, that's got to be super cool just personally to go, this is all kind of full circle and intertwined now. Indeed, indeed. And you know what? Uh, the AEW, it's it's funny. We're, we're coming into this new team and and being exposed to, to other you know, teams that are like-minded about the creative and about exciting a crowd 
and knowing, you know, the power of music versus, you know, and, you know, mixed with the power of like that kind of level of entertainment that they really have in their fighters and in their storylines and all that good stuff. Um, you know, the, that camp really cares about it. And, and it was, it was fun to, to, you know, not only work with them, but it, it, it's on, on a respect level, it was really nice to be brought into to such a great team. So, you know, we look forward to, to doing it again with them. I saw, it was a long time ago, it was either you or uh, now that I know Rob is a super fan, uh, one of you from the non-point Twitter was wanting to do a Becky Lynch uh, theme song at one point. That was Rob, without a doubt. Putting it yeah. into space. Yes, he's throwing it out there. Like, yo, we, we I'm just going to drop this little nugget and hopefully I'll get something to come back. <laughs> but that is Re- that, that's super cool. Wrestling I mean, Twitter is going to come back, hopefully. Have you, have you guys as a band, I mean, have you felt the response from wrestling fans? Like, is there a clear, hey, we gained fans from this? It, it literally jumped our YouTube, uh, I think, another 10,000 subscribers. It, it immediately, Yeah, it immediately, we felt the impact of the release of Ruthless alongside uh, that, the, the Blood and Guts event. It was, it was great amazing. to get. It was great to get a new group of fans that, you know, hit the ground running with us, really. Uh, well, let's let's talk a little bit about music then. All right. <laughs> you brought yeah. up Ruthless. Uh, it did premiere with the Blood and Guts, but let's talk about it just on a musical level. Uh, one, I, I mean, you're straight up killing fools in the video. What's what's happening here? We got baseball <laughs> bats. We've got hostages. I think you got turned on at the end. I don't know if that's a cliffhanger. What's happening here? You even well, promoted well, the most ruthless graphic video you guys have ever done. Uh, yeah, it, well, it was. It, it definitely pushed the envelope. We knew with the concept uh, when I presented it to the guys and really to my creative team and, and my marketing team uh, that we may run into some barriers with marketing it, especially in places <laughs> like YouTube. Um, for some reason, they don't like the violence. They don't like you bashing <laughs> people's heads with baseball. But um, so we uh, we definitely did run into that that uh, that hurdle with marketing the song. But um, but we wanted to kind of stretch, you know, uh, I guess the envelope uh, with um, how dangerous or, or not dangerous people may think or, or or not think we we will we will go with our with uh you know with our creative so yeah. uh artistically uh, we wanted to kind of push the envelope we've never done a very horror style movie style uh video and this one we felt like uh had the chance to at least uh get not only get noticed but really show that uh with our imagery we're we're gonna start um shaking a couple of trees how do you, uh, maybe this is just being pinned up from the pandemic, but you guys, you know, you got a, you got a song that comes out at the beginning of the pandemic. It's frontline workers, it's healthcare heroes. And, yeah. <laughs> and now we've got, we've got hostages. And <laughs> then we got freaking bats. <laughs> uh, yeah. Again, where did this song, where know, did Ruthless uh, come from? We are, we are, uh, we're a jack of many trades kind of band. We have yeah. songs like In the Air. Uh, yeah. We have songs like Bullet with a Name. There are many sides to our band. Right now, um, more than ever, I think, because we're it's in our hands and we are deciding how we want to spend our budget and where we want to spend our budget. That kind of an ambitious shoot and that kind of, a, of an ambitious idea uh, is something that we decided to take a risk at. So it, it's... It was, um, it was, it, it really just stemmed from us. You know, people have seen a million different kinds of videos from our band. Right. Uh, they've seen a million different performance videos. They've seen one acting video kind of from us, but I was the only person featured in the video. So, you know, uh, this one was something that we've never really done. And with a song like Ruthless, uh, we knew it was going to be a very effective song when people heard it. Uh, so visually, we wanted people to go, whoa, what is going on here? I can't wait to see what's next. Let's talk about, because you mentioned 
uh, Bullet with a Name, which was featured in a movie in the air, of course, is on the Miami Vice uh, movie back in the day. Uh, talk about talk about that as a as a cover song. Just your, I, you know, it's always kind of cool when you go see live music. You see a band, and you're kind of always hoping, give us one cover song. It's always kind of fun to see a band do something out of the ordinary. Was that a song you guys kind of were jamming before that, or was that a Hey, let's do this for this project. What made you decide to cover that song? Because that's, uh, that's a well, big that song to cover. Yeah, that wasn't a movie scenario. That was, uh, we were in the studio, had some time, um, and decided to work some songs. Uh, we tried a couple of other ones. We, we, we had never, uh, at the time, we hadn't really done um, a cover on our records outside of Tribute, which was more of a, a medley. Uh, that we did on the first record. Uh, so when it, it it was brought up, you know, when we turned in the record and we did it in, in like Liggity Split time because we had already written the record. So we were ready to go into the studio and record. Um, label had blocked out a, a good amount of time. It, we didn't need all that time. We, we still literally had two months to burn. So they were like, hey, if you guys want to keep writing, feel free, you know, the, the, the studio's paid for, so if you want to keep writing stuff, keep writing stuff. Uh, so we were like, well, we really don't have any songs. We really don't write in the studio. We like to kind of, you know, work on stuff. They were like, well, how about a cover? You guys and were like, oh, we tossed around some covers sometimes. You know, we, we could toss around some stuff now if you want. And uh, we started, you know, because those kind of develop a little bit faster, you know. Yeah. Um, and at least at the time, they really felt like they developed faster. This time, it, it, nowadays, we really <laughs> dig into it. Like, we just covered When Doves Cry by Prince. Uh, really? After, after that one. Well, we're about to release it. It's about to come out. Um, but that one was uh, chosen by our fans to, uh, to be covered. That's killer. So last year, during the pandemic, we ran a campaign, uh, put up 64 songs, started breaking them down, and put them in a like a, a, a bracket style, a, a bracket style, uh, week by week. Oh, we had our I miss this. Vote on it, and then the last two were it was Metallica versus Prince, and Prince won. When does uh, do we have any released it yet? Or are we still working? We're, that's still teasing. Uh, teasing, but I'd say a few weeks, in a couple weeks. I'd say you're probably going to be the first one to really get close to like a date. But I, I'd say, um, um. Very, 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 very soon. Well, go. You're going out on tour at the beginning of September, so kind of coinciding, maybe. Very, 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 <laughs> very soon. Okay. Uh, not, uh, this Saturday, this past Saturday, we we just shot the video, so okay. very. So it is very, 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 very soon. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're we're excited about it. Um, the team's really excited about it. They feel like the. Uh, I, I know I know fans are gonna like it. I'm, I'm not I'm not worried about that. One. I'm not worried about that. One. That That's one took pretty... a lot of lot, lot of work in it. We worked it. It was it was. Uh, I think there were seven different versions of the song, and, and we we finally settled on one. Well, that's a pretty cool. That's a pretty cool thing to go. Hey, we're doing a song that one a lot of people know, but there's got to be some like I don't. Is it maybe I'll ask, I'll just straight up. Is it more pressure or is it? A, a little bit easier that the fans are wanting you to do it. Uh, it, it did relieve some pressure. It really yeah. did, honestly, because I know at least my fans want us, want to see us right. cover that song. And they had plenty of other songs to vote down the path. Yeah. That one was strong all the way. You know what I mean? So it, 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 uh, there was a few on the, on the, uh, on the list that I still want to take a stab at. Like, uh, like uh, um, Edge of Seventeen by by Stevie Nicks, Stevie Nicks. And, uh, uh, Ready or Not by the Fugees, uh, you know a bunch of songs on there that I was I was, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm really thinking. I, we of, need uh, we need a whole like non point under the covers, like just covers. Uh, well, I want to get through dubs and see how people react to dubs, okay, um, okay. And, and and then we'll, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But <laughs> um, I I there were a, we we really tapered it down. There was a lot of really good ones. So I'm 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 happy that such a classic, monumental song that's going to be able to compete with "In the Air Tonight" was chosen. 
let's uh let's talk about recording and writing in the pandemic i've talked to a few bands everybody kind of did it differently uh ruthless did that all come about post pandemic during or pre. did you already get a little bit of it pre it was pre it was pre pandemic that's hard okay. to say that five times fast uh yeah. pre pandemic um we worked with fred archibald same gentleman that uh was our producer for the last uh record amazing producer uh great guy to work with and just puts you in the right place uh in in the recording environment so when we decided to venture out independently um we knew that it was okay to go ahead and spend that same amount of money that the label was willing to spend on 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 that that okay. kind of uh, uh you know mind musical and creative mind and leader uh when it comes to the recording process uh and and you know even helping us uh you know find our own greatness in, in, inside of the things that we're writing and and also to knowing when to kind of like let us do our thing when he feels like it's it's strong and it's there and he really doesn't need to do a lot he, he he's he's good about that where you know he interjects where he fi really feels like he needs to and he he gives us that honest transparent trustworthy consistency that allows me to know hey is he just trying to rush through this because he doesn't want to do it or is he really like no this is good i don't want to touch this go ahead or hey guys i really think you should work on this because he was you know he's if he's this here then that means that there's merit to what he's saying here so i want to i want to give that same respect there how to the general public, how underrated is a producer for a band? How underrated a good producer for a band is? Yeah, I mean, do you think do you think we do you think the general public does takes for granted what a producer can do for a band? Absolutely, absolutely, and also to sometimes what a band can do for themselves. There is both sides of that coin. I have worked with producers um, that that are talented, but it was just a different workspace. And I've worked with producers that were highly talented that I wish I had in a different working environment. You know, more time, more money, more split, more everything, just so I could get even more out of them. Um, there was, I've, I've been in, in almost every single, not having any producer, I've been in that scenario. So, um, and that was basically one of my biggest records to the pain, we didn't have a producer on that record. Really? So, yeah. So that was, was that a choice going the, in? The band, say again. Was that a choice going in, not having a producer for that? But budgetary wise, we didn't feel like we we wanted to spend the money there, having spent the money so many times prior, and you know, feeling that you know maybe the changes that happened didn't translate to our fans because that's not what was happening live. Right. So when when you listen to to the pain. It sounds like a set list. That's a big deal. I mean, there, there's a big deal of, uh, you know, going to – you hear it a lot of times, hey, I went and saw a band live and it changed my whole perception of the band. Uh, that's yeah. that's pretty interesting to think of a whole album of we put it together kind of like a set list. Yeah. But for some, but a producer, a producer can make or break a band as a whole. You know, sometimes producers help bands find their sound. You know, I, 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 uh, I've heard stories from bands saying, hey, we didn't even have anything until we went into this guy. And then that was our sound. And we came out of that recording process, this multi-platinum act, because right. he, and, you know, even Johnny K said it to me. It's like, you know, sometimes you have to let people show you your own greatness. You're, you know, this is good, but this right here is great. So let, let's focus on how, why and how this is so great. And, you know, can you do this better? Can this be better? Can this, and, you know, same thing goes with Fred and, and a lot of the people that were, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, many of the people that we worked with uh, have had that, you know, sometimes pivotal moment uh, with us. With, uh, same thing with, um, you know, Tom Lord Algae. Perfect example. Our very first, you know, mixer ever 
didn't produce the record, but mixed the record, What a Day, had drums in the beginning of that song. That song used to have drums. Before you heard that guitar riff and just me singing over it, that original song had drums right from the beginning. Rob was coming out playing drums. So that, that was y'all's idea going in? So Yes. It, when we handed that song to be mixed, it had drums attached to it. When it came, when we went to the mix to hear that song for the first time, when he hit play, there were no drums on the beginning of that song. And we were like, Oh, he was like, yeah, I kind of like the drums, but I thought it really sounded cool when I pulled the drums out. Let me know what you think. Put it up. And we were like, hey, this is really good. It's a great setup for the song. Bang. And it went in and we loved it. So that that was a Man. big pivotal moment. And like I said, sometimes people have to show you this magic sometimes that's sitting in there that sometimes you don't you know, realize because you've been working on it for a year, two years sometimes. Yeah. That's got to be a huge trust factor, too. It is. It is. And it goes with people that you respect their opinion. I mean, these songs are your, these, they're your babies. They're your creation. And somebody yeah. else is going, I think I make your baby better. And you're like, wait, what? Yeah. But, but these people are also not sitting on platinum records, making tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars working with major acts for me to take their opinion and second guess it too far, you know, because at right. the same time too, I have to, you know, I, 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 I'm in that scenario because I trusted them to, to challenge me. And it's not a sense of me not doing what I want to do. It's me challenging my creative abilities. Here's where I am. Can you do better? And I, if I think to myself, well, yeah, maybe I can, then I should be doing better. And I go after it. But if it's something that I love and I adore, you know, producers and even really good producers can, can see that and, and sometimes realize, you know, it's uh, your opinion versus my opinion, and I'm cool with your opinion as well. So let's just move forward. That's super cool. Thanks for the uh, kind of behind the behind the curtain there for the the magic hey, of what. How, call what me we, the Wizard of Oz. We all just we all just see, see the finished product. So it's it's you know it's on, it's super cool to hear that relationship. And I've always thought producers, I, you know, maybe underrated is a bad word, but. Like you said, it's, it can be on the artist or it can be on the producer for why something was successful or something failed. There's definitely a relationship and magic kind of has to happen between the two. Everybody's got to have that same on the same page understanding of what the goal is. And, and then that magic happens and then it makes for a good producer and a good band relationship. Well, let's uh, let's talk about it because uh, you guys, I'm excited. You're coming to Huntsville where I'm based out of. Uh, you guys are coming in September to Shag Nasties, and you, you're about to get a full-blown tour. I know you did a couple shows, got some rust off of you. I love seeing social media posts where you guys jamming in the room, getting back, you know, getting your sea legs back under you. But uh, talk about uh, talk about how exciting this is. Is it is it nervous? Is it scary? I mean, there's a whole lot of things, you know, going on, and it can change day to day, but – you guys first going out, working with the Trey U for a few dates, got some festivals, and then boom, full-blown headlining tour, ready to rock and roll. Yeah, uh, it is uh, – the whole industry is reluctant right now. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're all doing our best to help everyone figure out <laughs> what the next step is. Uh, yeah. But, you know, some people are feeling – safe some people are feeling not very safe right and uh right now we're weighing our decisions against our health our livelihoods the industry that we're a part of you know a lot of clubs a lot of friends and clubs that have supported us for decades uh, like people like the machine shop in, in Flint, Michigan and, and, you know, like Shag Nasty's, you know, these, these venues have been around for a really long time and we want to keep these people going and keep ourselves going and keep the industry going. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's a, an area kind of situation where we have to go with what the area is allowing or not allowing. And then 
doing our best to keep ourselves safe the same way every other camp is. You stay in the bubble, you wear masks if you're feeling like it's going to be a packed night. And, you know, you go backstage and make sure you're not rubbing elbows with any, you know, strangers that you're not sure are vaxxed or safe or wearing a mask or keeping distance or, right. you know, not feeling under the weather. You know, there's a million things that you're going to have to uh, uh, weigh. But, um, you know, I have families my family, my band members' families, the it, families of the industry are all trying to, um, you know, do our best to, to make a, a good decision. And right now it's hard to make any decision. So yeah. we're going with by the, the recommendations of professionals, the recommendation of our team. And, you know, for sure, if somebody gets sick, we're going to have to get off the road and let everybody get well and try it again later if that's the case. Um, a lot of tours are getting through themselves a lot of tours are pulling off first week so yeah. um you know we're 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 doing our best just to keep from the from the handful of shows you've had uh i've been to a handful of shows since everything's opening back up so from my perspective as a fan uh I, I w i'll be interested to see if you see it the same way but i've seen the crowd no matter if they're wearing a mask or whatever the deal may be wherever the venue if the venue social distancing or if they're just letting everybody in uh, from my side of the view, from my point of view, it seems like one, uh, maybe recharged for back of a letter word for a lack of a better word for the bands, but it's almost a new excitement of, man, we got people in front of us again. And the, and the crowds have been just eating up, wanting to see live music again. I mean, you, you know what that everybody feeds off of each other. Have you noticed crowds, man, they are ready to get back at this and having fun at a concert. What have you noticed? Absolutely. The, the crowds are definitely there, but this, the signs are all there too. Please try yeah. to keep social distance. Please wash your hands, wear your masks. Um, you know, they're breaking up pits. They don't want people pitting at shows because they don't want people that rubbing up against each other yeah. hurt, you know, like in that sense. So, you know, the average rock fan isn't getting the full experience that they're used to and you know we see it in the comment section i just dropped a post that has over three and a half thousand comments just trying to get gauge the climate of of what people are thinking and how it's affecting ticket sales people are are canceling their tickets and selling their tickets because they don't want to wear masks or they don't want to get vaccines it's there's so many different opinions in the comment yeah. sections that All time you know, we don't know what to expect. And when you don't know what to expect, it's hard to to survive on that kind of thing. plan, adjust and thrive. It's hard to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're 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 like I said, we're working um, as best we can to to you know get through the tour. Uh, we're hoping people sh you know show up. Uh, if a particular city starts seeing ridiculous spikes and they lock it down or they stop indoor gatherings, there's nothing we can do. We're just going to have to take the day off and hopefully there won't be a lot of days off. <laughs> hopefully there's not a lot of days off. Yeah. I like that. Uh, well, man, I'm excited. Can't wait to see you guys roll back through, uh, roll through Huntsville. I don't know uh, the last time or if it's been a while from Huntsville. I know Birmingham is a big town for you guys, but uh, we are excited yeah. in Huntsville, man. And if I see you in Huntsville, that means everything is going good. So that's a good yeah. Sign. If you see me by then, it's good. I'm I'm, I'm feeling good. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Uh, go to Nonpoint. Point. Go to your website. Go to social media. You guys got the tour dates up. Yeah, everybody can find out when it's coming. Yeah, you go to nonpoint.com. Every single ticket link, every city to everything, including all the festivals, uh, all of the I'm about to explode tour, all their trade dates, all the see their dates are all there, plus all the VIPs. You just click on it. Uh, you have an ability to buy tickets, buy VIPs, uh, all the merch uh, for Ruthless, and the pre-order stuff is there, uh, the stuff that's still available. Um, so, yeah, nonpoint.com has everything. At Nonpoint on social media as well. Before we get out of here, Elias, I do got to hit you with the countdown. Ten questions I ask everybody. Uh, we'll have a good Let's time here. Uh, ten. Name something that's a perfect ten in your life. Perfect 10 right now, uh, my coffee game, my coffee game. Yeah. What do you I, mean? I have, I, have a, I have an espresso machine and it's fancy <laughs> coffee 
for for a, the man that doesn't uh, want to pay nine thousand dollars for a barista machine and uh, fourteen hundred dollars a month for uh, keeping it up. Get yourself an espresso machine. Pay the money. It it is going to destroy your Keurig. You're going to throw. You're going to take your Keurig out and you're going to do like the office. Drag it out there and smash it with a baseball bat on top. How much? Wait. How much coffee are you taking a day? How much? What we got? We got a problem? Oh, how much coffee are you gonna? Oh, my. Uh, I drink uh, at least three, three cups, maybe oh, four a day. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too bad, but it's high test, man. It's it's not. It's 93 octane. It don't. It, <laughs> it's ready I to go. Half calf, calf, half calf. <laughs> that, 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 I'm doing all that stuff. I'm 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 a. I'm this a, ain't just I, brown I go, water. This is lead. I go to Starbucks and I do the quadruple shots. So no doubt. <laughs> all right, this is coming in on. I like it. Yeah. All right. Is it was that a splurge during the pandemic, or do you already have that? How, it was a splurge. The wife was like, "Hey, I'm getting you this. It's the George Clooney coffee, and for the price that they they charge you, he should make your first cup at least. He should come to your house. He should <laughs> deliver it and make your first damn cup." All right, Clooney, if you're listening, he's a big fan. Uh, yeah, give up. my man some free coffee. Yes, hook it up. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, number nine. Uh, nine's a German word for no. So what's what do you wish was no more in your life? This could be people answer this serious, non-serious, no game, more Twitter trolls, fighting, whatever you want. Cat litter, cat litter. Oh my god. What? Changing change the cat litter box is the worst thing ever known <laughs> to mankind. It needs to end. Cats need to figure it out. They need to learn how to open doors and poop and pee outside have I'm you seen the ones on youtube that used to come on listen listen to me i'm not training a cat <laughs> all right that's where i draw the line you they just need to figure out dogs figure it out you can figure it out cat you were just right before we went on i was telling you i, I got a new pup and you were saying you got a new cat no more cat litter man i'm over it <laughs> what about the automatic it. ones have you seen the automatic Cat litter box still doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> matter because it's they still they, grab right when they shit. do it. If they're not good at covering it up and it's a kitten, so it doesn't do it right, it's scratching the wall next to it and the floor. I'm like, you're not even moving litter. Cover yeah, we, your poop. We got one yeah, cat, so and it's like he. I feel like when we're not looking, he's scooping the litter and throwing it all over the cat. I, I feel like it's doing it on purpose. All right, that's what you can do. All right, uh, number eight, when you die, what do you want your last meal to be? What's the last thing you ate when you go out? Uh, last thing I eat when I go out? Yeah, what do you want your last meal to be? This could be mixed last... and match. This could be home cooking from a restaurant, appetizer, dessert, whatever you want. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to go with my last meal would be chef's choice at this restaurant in Matawan, Michigan, uh, called uh, Known La Vietnamese Street Food. This guy should be a Michelin star chef if he's not already. Uh, it is hands down, every single time I go there, it's something new on the menu, and it's always delicious and amazing. Um, Chef's you know, choice. Eat, eat, eating in tiny restaurants that, you know, you find a good chef or you find a good spot uh, where they really care about the food quality and the product. Um, I'm a foodie. I've been all over the world. I've seen 49 of our 50. I've been to multiple countries, dozens of countries. And, you know, I I got to say, that that's probably going to be up there. I'd let that man, whatever that man wanted to cook me before I die, that's what I want. <laughs> are, you, are you friends with him? You need a free meal uh, yeah, on this plug. Yeah. Yeah, John. He's he's uh, the head chef. I don't know his last name, but uh, John. He's he's amazing. Uh, known the street Vietnamese street food, Matawan, and it's a tiny, tiny town. Like I grew up in South Florida, so there are some baller restaurants in South Florida, yeah. Fort Lauderdale, Miami, West Palm Beach. There are huge, like expensive, beautiful, crafted restaurants. This guy, I cannot believe that this restaurant is in this tiny town in Michigan. All Thai food. Say so again, oh, it's a Vietnamese street food. Oh, Vietnamese, yeah, yeah. But he does things like, uh, instead of crab rangoon, it's like lobster rangoon, but he uses like homemade mm. wonton. It's like, it's unbelievable, man. I, I don't even mm. like it. My mouth is, my mouth is watery. Like crispy pork belly, uh, bao tacos. It's like, man, uh, let me start. Buddy, you're, 
uh, you're trying. I'm, I'm a fat guy. You're changing my angle to my dangle right here. Now. Right, there you go. Okay, come up here. I'll, I'll treat you right. I'll <laughs> add some inches. I'll add some inches. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. Uh, when you were seven years old, what do you want to be when you grew up? When I was seven years old, uh, I thought I was going to be a comedian or a lawyer. Really? Yeah, uh, a lawyer comedian, actually. <laughs> the funny was, lawyer was, that makes everybody. Yeah, I wanted to be a lawyer for my mom, and I wanted to be a comedian for me. What What made you want to be a comedian? Because I, I do stand-up as well, so this is I, fascinating. Man, I loved Pee Wee Herman growing up. I, I watched Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yeah, it was huge. I was actually Pee Wee Herman for, uh, for Halloween when I was a kid. Um, but I used to watch stand up and memorize stand up like, um, you know, Eddie Murphy, Andrew Dice Clay. Like, I oh. would memorize word for word entire comedy routines. So, I, I really, um, I really got a gas on being on stage and making people laugh. Uh, that's probably why during the sets, you, you see, like, in between uh songs it's 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 there's some funny banter back and forth i, I definitely like to hear laugh now and again when's uh the, when's the last time you got to see a comedy show i mean your schedule's kind of the same as a comic so it's have you got uh, to see last, one lately uh last comedy show i went to actually i saw brian posen oh great fantastic with vinnie paul oh yeah brian's a great um, rock fan Vin, too it was a it was a day off uh, and we were in uh, Fort Worth, and Vinny found out we were, you know, he was in Dallas, and we had a day off, and he was like, hey, man, come come check out some, uh, some stand-up with me. So he sent the, uh, Brian. you know, the car to come pick us up, and, and uh, oh, we had a great, great night, man. It was outstanding. Brian, Brian's a great rock fan. He's even put yes. out some death metal shit. Have you heard it? Yes. He's great. He's great. Great. Yeah. All right. Number six, uh, how do you want to end up six feet under? How do you want to go out? Uh, sleeping uh, with a belly full of sushi. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, a chef's choice. Hopefully that chef's choice is good, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just because I, 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 it's not like eating sushi and going to sleep. It doesn't give you any heartburn. You feel full, but mm. then you wake up and you're hungry again. All right, number, <laughs> number five, five-finger discount. What's the last thing you stole? Uh, I know the answer to this. Last thing that I stole, I I was dared, I was dared in the second grade to steal chocolate football candies <laughs> from when I was in the first grade, and I and I remember grabbing like a small handful and opening up my little pencil case. It was like my, uh, you know, it was part of my trapper keeper or something, and I dropped the handful into it. And I knew the guy saw me, and I he probably knew I was stealing it. But I was so I was such a kid; he didn't care. And I, he probably just... <laughs> I like to yeah. piggyback on this since you're a hotel yeah. dude. What do you What do you take from hotels? Well, I never. Well, uh, another note on that: I felt so guilty from that. I've never stolen anything for six. Really, second grade yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Not, 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 not if I can help it. Not if I can help. It. Like I've accidentally stole water from the grocery store when I don't count it when it's at the bottom of the golf uh, bottom of oh, the like a whole cart. case. Yeah, you know when you throw the case at the bottom, yeah, yeah. you throw Way a couple of water, there. and then they're bringing you out and you don't see it because it's crystal clear what? and you're not what? really looking down. So and then, but you get out to the parking lot and you could be like, ah, "Am I gonna go back and pay for this?" <laughs> and you're like, "Nah, hey. Walmart's making enough money." I'm <laughs> so, just gonna I was gonna say, there had it. to be a moment where you go, "I ain't taking it back in to bring it." <laughs> You know, you're looking for cameras in the parking lot. <laughs> well, are you stay in hotels a lot. What do you take from hotels? Because I mean, oh, I always take, I always take the travel toiletry stuff because. But it, that's not it, stealing. It, yes, because uh, I'm always traveling and flying, and it's the perfect size. Beautiful. So I accumulate them, and when it's time to do like a weekend run or a one-off, and I gotta fly and go do something, I can just grab a couple, throw them in the thing, and then zip it up and you know, be able to get there. It's all about getting through the security quickly. And I've mastered that. I'm, I'm, I'm fat. Do you ever take pillows or towels? No, that's gross. <laughs> that's got leftover from somebody else. <laughs> that's I, ain't, gross. I ain't sleeping on. Like, I, ain't I don't sleeping want to on, use them when I'm there. I'm not, much less later. No, I'm not sleeping on any tourist dander. 
<laughs> and he's, I think that band is playing Coachella this year, Tour Standard. Yeah, Tour Standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. they got a great new EP. Yeah, right, reggae number- group. Reggae group. All dreadlocks. <laughs> number four. Uh, sometimes I change this. You might be from, you, 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 you spent a lot of time in Florida, so you might. My OG question to four is top four Rushmore Little Debbies. Were you ever a Little Debbie guy? You need my you need my top four Little Debbies? Because I'm throwing you a curveball because I usually go four pizza toppings if I don't think Nutter the butters. guest. The oh. Nutter Butters. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Nutter Butters. The Donut Stick. Oh, it's underrated. Underrated. Donut Stick. Uh, uh, wait, wait, I had, I had a number two, wait, wait, don't tell me, um, the, the number one is zebra cakes, hands okay. down, Okay. number one is zebra cake, number one, zebra cake takes it, zebra not cakes. a debate, all right, not a debate, uh, zebra cakes, uh, but my number two is, um, uh, is, you ever uh, toss some OGs out there, what do you yeah, throw, throw them at me. OGs are uh, oatmeal cream pie, uh, cosmic brownie. Now a lot of people have a debate between zebra cake and Christmas tree cake. The Christmas tree cake. <laughs> the Christmas tree both cake. Of them on. I like I like both of them. And you know what? The co- I'm gonna go with the cosmic brownie because I- I'll be honest with you. It was the it was the the cakey treat that was priced right. It was because you could you- walk into a Back when I was going to walk into school in the in the mornings, and I would go into the gas station, they were twenty five. I can't believe I was about I'm to say, say quarter, hands down, about, every time. It was twenty five cents. Yeah, Two. you knew what so you were getting. You knew what you were getting, and then that with a Ritz Cola. Do you guys have Ritz Cola where you are back in the well, day? Oh yeah, we we know where Ritz. Yeah, and it was forty nine cents. You get a forty nine cent Ritz Cola. <laughs> I was about to say, my mate, we're we're probably close to the same age because it was. Basically, a fifty cent drink and a twenty five cent little debit, yes. and you had some change left. Or a clearly Canadian. You ever have a clearly Canadian? Clearly Canadian, the sparkling water stuff. I took you back. I just took you <laughs> way back. <laughs> That's I'm wearing an Intimidator shirt, man. I had a, you don't I think had I know a Surge that, you know? run? You remember Surge? All the eighties, nineties. Oh, you remember snacks. Surge? Do you remember, remember Surge? What? Sir, of course I remember Surge. <laughs> I remember Surge. <laughs> Snapple. The original snap. <laughs> we didn't even get to Star Crunch or Swiss K. Uh, there's a lot of OG little Debbies. That was a yes. good for me springing that on you. That was a good. That was a good brush for That means you're a little Debbie fan. Yes, yes. I, I, I. They, they got some of my money. People. <laughs> they got some of my money. Well, sometimes my alternate question is pizza topping. So why you're you're firing them off? Four toppings on the perfect pizza. Cheese doesn't count. It's already on there. Okay, cheese isn't on it, right? Yeah, che- cheese right. is already a base. Okay, cheese is already a base. All right, if it's a wood fire pizza. Is that what you want? All right. If it's a wood fire pizza, that means burnt and thin crust. Uh, pepperoni. Salami. I know it sounds okay. crazy, but on a Big pizza, pieces? it's unbelievable. Big pieces of salami. Yeah. yeah. A dollop of uh, uh, ricotta cheese. Oh, yeah, right in the middle. Dollop and jalapenos. Ooh. That's on Ooh, one. A little bit of spice. That's on that one because that with the burnt ends and the uh, – okay, now Detroit-style pizza, a Detroiter, you're going to go – What is officially – educated Southern guy. What is officially Detroit-style Detroit style style? pizza is the square – where they put the cheese all the way to the edge so that, that way when it cooks, it bubbles and crusts around the edge and you get that burnt good cheese that's mm. like chewing good around the edge. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Is it that's a medium it's. crust or is it thin still? It's it's a little bit in between. It's a little thick enough like a regular to be thick, crust. but it's not Chicago style thick where you feel like you're eating a shoe with cheese on it. Yeah, it's I, large. Not, okay. Yeah, it's too thick for me. Yeah, I, I like to have a couple slices. But, oh, yeah, I like um, it like a cracker. I want it as thin as possible. Then you're gonna like the wood fire. Uh, okay. But when it comes to Detroit style, which is my new hotness, uh, old world style cup uh, pepperoni, the kind that cups up into the cup. Okay, kind of taste. that's really good. Uh, spicy uh, pepperoni. Is that the little smaller pieces of pepperoni? Yeah, those. 
the roundness, the little yeah, baby round. They like burnt on the edge and like. Yep. That's oh, the yeah, one. Those are good. See what I'm saying? And then uh, you want to do that with mushroom uh, and green pepper is always a good one. Mushroom, green pepper, pepperoni. That's that's a really good combo. Yeah, like you, you you got a fat guy down inside you somewhere. It, he used to be. <laughs> he used to be. I wear big rocking shirts. and burning calories. That's what he started doing. I wear big shirts. <laughs> All right. All right, last you know, I, I, I just tell people I just use I just tell people that I used to weigh 350 pounds and I'm like, man, you look good for a I just look good for a dude that used to weigh that much. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what I do. I buy bigger shirts. Like you lose weight. I'm like, nah, I just went up the size of play. Yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> Everybody yeah. thinks you lose weight if you got big clothes on. All right, number Absolutely. three. Three three albums on the deserted island. You're not gonna get in trouble for saying these are the three greatest albums ever. I, I always preface that. You're just stuck on an island. You can only listen to this. Some people go greatest hits. Some people go a, a live record. So it act, they seems like people's on the island with them. A lot of different takes you could go here. Just same three on repeat. What you got? Legend, Bob Marley. Okay. Wish You Were Here, Pink Floyd. Okay. Uh, we got wait, different no, grooves. Uh, I like this. Wait, wait, wait. No, um. Uh, no, the one with the prism on it. Uh, dark side, dark side of, the of the moon. moon. Dark side of the moon. And mm. uh, hang on, I'm gonna go with because I gotta Good have decision. some kind of hip. I gotta have a hip hop record in there. I'm sorry, I gotta have a and JC's Black Album. Oh yeah. Those are three different uh, mindsets, too. I yeah, like that. Because I hey, that's all I got. I need, yeah, three, I need to be able to ship hardcore if I'm on an island. Every day is going to be. If I just a... have, like, you know, if I had, like, Slipknot and, and, and you know, <laughs> all the ones that I want, I, I, I'd just, I'd eat all the coconuts in the first day. And I'd be impressive as hell. Just, you know, yeah, it's smash like, yeah, coconut. Slipknot system of the down and depth tones. You know, I'd be like, man, I need some Bob Marley or every parrot on this island's going to die tonight. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sitting at the edge of the beach with a spear man. listening to Unforgiven by Metallica just <laughs> staring at dolphins. You're next. Here's a, here's, a, here's a future project. Just slip in. Every parrot on this island is going to die at some point. That's what I want. I'm gonna, that I'm gonna tells your aggression. Later. That tells how yeah. pissed off you are. Now you see, you see ruthless why it happened. If you got, I, now I need somebody to parody the video with you uh, and the baseball bat and parents instead. <laughs> All funny. right, number number two, uh, two concerts. One's the first concert you went to as a fan, and the second one is the last concert you went to as a fan. Not you guys were performing or whatever. You were there as a fan. Uh, last concert I went to as a fan before I was in the band, I'd say Puya. Okay. Puya, the first, the first one, right? You're saying the first that I went to as a fan. Well, well, what's your first concert you ever went to? Period. First concert I ever went to was period was Puya. Okay. And that was Way where and day. when? First big concert, big national act was Corn Helmet and Limp Biscuit with Corn headlining Helmet main support and Limp Bizkit opening. Really? That was at the UCF Amphitheater. What was that, late 90s? Uh, during uh, uh, Life is Peach. So Jeez, the second that's a damn lineup, man. Second record. Uh, last concert I went to as a fan fan. So, like, um, I mean, I no, like, like, you could have already been in a band, like you are, but, like, just the last one you went, I, I'm going to go see this concert. You weren't As playing a fan, it. So it could have been circus, last year. Probably Circa Survive. What was that? Circa Survive. Okay. I'd say that was the last one that I went to as a fan. When was that? Uh, a couple years ago. Like four years ago, five years ago. Where was it? South Florida. Okay. All right. Yeah. You just go, hey, I, I got to go. I got time off. Are you friends with I, them? Or yeah, you wanna, yeah. I need to I, see this. 
yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of their band and, and, and uh, I know they don't tour that often. So I, I definitely wanted to catch them. They were in South Florida. I happened to be visiting home and I was like, I am going. That's killer. All right. Yeah. Number one, we chatted about it earlier. We're going to back to the wrestling world. Uh, this is going to be fun since you are a wrestling fan. If you could pick a wrestler, present, current, past, doesn't matter. If you're a wrestler, who would you be? And then two, I need your tag team partner if you did a one-off. If I could be any wrestler Ever. in the world, it would probably have been... Oh, man. Mm. I'd say it's a toss-up between... And I'm going to go old school just because he was like one of my favorites. I'm going to go Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Oh, rest in peace. Just lost him, yeah. Yes. Uh, or, or, of course, the Holster because he was like... He was such a mad Hulk Hogan was so massive when I was coming up, um, you know. Uh, but if you're asking me tag team, if if I had to pick a wrestler, but I could only and I had to choose him because who was going to be my tag team? No, partner, no, no, no. Hands, you... hands down, though. Let me finish okay. this thought. All hands right, down, right. it would most certainly either be Hawk or Animal from the Road Warriors because <laughs> okay. they are. The baddest wrestling wrestler, T T any they when you heard, yeah. it and they came running down the aisle, busting into the ring. The guys ringing the door, the bell, <laughs> and and the rest, the referees just it's just havoc, man. That was they're walking into the ring with with shoulder pads, come on, with spikes on them. <laughs> Come on, man. You're not going to beat that dude. You're not going to beat that dude. I don't what care. Rush. Come on. Come on. You know, the, the, I'm telling you, man, the Road Warriors are wrestling in a nutshell. That, that was intensity, athleticism, and badassness all in one. <laughs> like, and, for real. <laughs> badassness. Isn't it great? Uh, you got to appreciate his music fan and being involved in wrestling and doing music for them. It's always awesome when a you know you're over as a group, as a tag team or a soul artist. If literally like two notes into your theme song, people know what's happening and they just lose it's, their mind. Yeah, pe people people have been using our songs as their. Uh, they're walking music on that, yeah. that game for years, so I, I'm I'm all down for it. I, I love it, man. It but it's like you, you'll and, never and, and forget on, that build being up. On, being on AEW, uh, you know, WWE, AEW, working with all these wrestlers, working with all these teams, bucket list. I get to check that off, man. Well, you survived the countdown, but I do want to follow up because you mentioned uh, working with Jericho and touring with Fozzie. Mm -hmm. um, talk about. That's. I would love to hear your interaction with knowing Jericho. Now he's got a band. One, you got to be going. Is this guy serious? Everybody wants to be in a rock band that's you know famous. Yeah. And then two, seeing them and experience them as a rock band, separate entity. Um. I, I mean, I assume. I'm assuming you appreciate Foxy as a band. I do, but it's got to be a he's cool thing to see that. He's an entertainer. He's serious about it. He takes it seriously. He is very serious he, about it. He's he is he's a he's the rock singer. That's it's plain and simple. The guy is a front man. He's a great entertainer. Uh, he's always been amazing at being a a a, a personality, especially in wrestling. It there's many people that wear many hats. There's no reason why Jericho shouldn't and can't do what he's doing. So God bless the guy. I, I love watching them perform. Um, it was a pleasure to tour with them. They're the, some of the sweetest dudes ever. Um, we've been friends with Rich and, and, you know, all the dudes in that band for years and years. So um, I, they're my friends. I, I, God bless them all. I, I hope they keep doing it. For real. Well, man, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you coming on. I know you're very busy getting ready for the tour. Uh, I'm going to get my ass kicked by the local venues because I, I said the wrong venue, but I will see you at Sidetracks in Huntsville. I do know Shane. Sidetracks, that's right. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
Luckily, they're friends and they won't hate each other, but I'll get some shit from Shane and the crew at Sidetracks. Hey, buddy. Shane, sorry. But we will see you at Sidetracks Music Hall. Uh, that is yeah. coming up. Everybody else can check you guys out. I mean, starting basically from the beginning of September through basically the end of the year, if everything's uh, like we were think hoping it is, uh, you guys will be rocking and rolling out there, busting your ass and giving us the times of our lives one night at a time, uh, every time, man. We are super excited and I uh, can't wait to see you personally in Huntsville. I'll say hey to you, man. I'll bring you some cosmic you, brownies. Look, look, yeah, bring me cosmic brownies. And if you can't find the Christmas ones because it's not time yet, bring me some zebra cakes. There we go. Elias Soriano, Nonpoint. Find them on social media at Nonpoint. Go see them when they come to a town near you. And uh, thanks again, man. Everybody, thank, thank you, you for listening. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, rate, stay mashed. We'll see you next time.